Hear me, Poseidon. We found your lost daughter. We knew it was her. It's how she loves the taste of salt. And our foul air is choking her, slowly choking her. But what made us certain is the way she moves in the water.
What's your very first, um, what's your very first memory that really sticks? Uh, um, that's hard. I think my very first memory that I like really remember is going to uh, Lake Havasu, mm -hmm. or it was, I think it was Lake Powell with my family. It was one of those two. And we would stay in this one um, trailer thing and like we would all go as a family. And I remember this uh, candy shop called Powell's. Yeah, so it was Lake Powell. And I would always go in there and there would be this um, like gummy lunches and I would always want them. And that's like one of the first like clear memories. We are rolling. Cool. All right. Um, to start off, um, kind of at the beginning, uh, what was it like having Bree as a little baby? Well, when Bree was uh, born, she was not. Uh, they did not test her for cystic fibrosis. So when she was a baby, she would actually eat triple the amount of food that I would. But when she would eat her lunch, 
she'd always have to go to the bathroom and breakfast came out and then she'd eat dinner and then lunch came out and uh, sometimes when we woke up in the morning well most of the times uh, she'd have this big belly and it was just like what the heck's going on and uh, at night though after she slept in the morning she had no belly it was like you saw her little hip bones so that was kind of a, a a trigger to me that something might be wrong. At three years old, Brianna weighs 40 pounds. She's curious, dynamic. At four, she's still 40 pounds. The doctor says she's leaning out. But there are signs. At night, her fingertips swell into tiny bulbs. Her appetite for salt is unnatural. When she weighs 40 at 5, there are reassurances. She's your skinny child, and mother wants to believe. But with her weight, Again, 40 pounds at age six. That belief is gone. Well, I would take samples into the pediatrician and I was like, what's going on? My family doesn't do petite and she's petite. There has to be something wrong. And they just kept passing over it, passing over it. So anyways, when she was 40 pounds at age three, and then 40 pounds at age six, I was like, I demanded to see a gastrologist. There has to be something wrong. She eats triple the amount of food I do. And um, within an hour, they diagnosed her with cystic fibrosis. Um, and that was a heart-wrenching day. He called me at work to tell me. Yeah. Cystic fibrosis is a genetic disease. It affects the body's secretions. It attacks the lungs, the sinus, the digestive system. The bulbs on Brianna's fingers signal a lack of oxygen. Her great appetite without weight gain is the second sign. And there's the cough. Wet, dry, it becomes a marker. There's a powerful urge to keep her safe. But Brianna will have none of it. When confronted with the great fears, we do have choices. We can keep our distance. Or we can face them down.
close. Brianna was told that her lungs would likely fail. She chose to practice the art of not breathing. We all know someone who's lived through the darkness. Maybe even now. Brianna did this as a child. She was in preschool even. She, um, they would go in and pray in the church and my child's crawling under the pews and doing handstands and cartwheels in, in the aisle. It just, she just does not sit still, but she's a very intelligent girl. She would finish doing her homework or finish doing the tests and then she'd get in trouble. I, I told her teachers, give her a broom, let her sweep up the classroom or something that would keep her busy. But anyways, athletics are our whole families, um, especially water, uh, water activities. We're always in the water. I don't feel right unless I'm in the water. So that's pretty much it. childish things and when if ever should we put them away
Does hardship steal your bliss? Have you mingled with the coward angels who do not fight? Who have no faith? Come with me to the sea. Play with the better angels. And find what it means to drown in celebration. And, uh, sixth overall, so of all the divots. So, but then she hurt her knee. So then we went to diving, which would be less strenuous on her knees and all that. And um, while we were uh, diving, the social worker, Julia Greenwald, who is uh, my savior, um, she told us about a surfing uh, foundation. It was called Maliola. And so we decided to take it out, you know, check it out. So we went one day, and I think the first one was in Huntington Beach. And so she enjoyed it so much and it was funny because all the the what Maliola is is professional surfers donate their time to teach kids with cystic fibrosis how to how to surf Maliola begins with the Dunlop brothers Charles and James Working at Ambry Genetics with diseases like cystic fibrosis, they discover the healing powers of salt water. And Maliola is born.
Here's a weird one. Do you think about your father ever? I actually, no, I haven't. I've never, like, really thought about it. I don't know. I guess, like, I'm just used to not having a dad, so I don't ever think about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can get it. Yeah. If your father was here now, what would you say to him? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, I don't know. I don't think I'd, like, really have anything to say. I wouldn't know what to say. I'd probably just be, like, speechless. Yeah. Speechless. And not for you, Father. I knew you before. Before I had words. But now I'm strong at the broken places. Remember me. I was yours once. And like all great cathedrals, the ocean has its monks. A great many are surfers. Mass comes with the sun. Worship is nearly always silent. That is, unless the tandem surfers attend. My name is Red John in the English tongue But it was the angel when I was young Can you tell from whence I come? John in the English tongue But it was the Algerian when I was young Can you tell from whence I come? So anyways, every every person that was there that would come in from surfing with Brianna was like, oh my God, she's so good at this. I, you know, you need to pursue this. And I'm like, okay, so we went to the next Malioli event, and then the next Malioli event, and uh, she just had a blast. And then I think it was the second or third time we met Bobby Friedman, who was a world champion tandem surfer in the 80s and the 90s 
Um, and he would come out and do some little tricks with the kids. So, make a long story short, Brianna came up to me and said, will you take me surfing? And I, said, I introduced her to, you know, they introduced her to me, and I said, of course. And she had this bright smile, and I took her out. And I got my 20 minutes with her, and just rode on waves and surfed, and she had a blast. As in many of the great epics, the larger plot reveals itself slowly. The immortals often harbor a strange jealousy of us. As for Poseidon, he rarely appears in true form. But he does send avatars. 
month later was another event, and there's Brianna, man, first in line. She comes up, Bobby, Bobby, will you take me tandem? A lot of the volunteers take them surfing where they push them on a wave themselves, but because I was a pro tandem surfer for a living, my rides are a little different. Rather than them balancing and trying to surf, and carving and turning and hitting the lip and doing stuff that could take them years on the very first wave.
Cystic fibrosis is a debilitating disease, but a group of children are overcoming some of the difficulties with the therapeutic powers of surfing with some help from some of the top pros in the world. Eyewitness News reporter Adrian Bankert has this story. We're really stoked to take advantage of the natural healing properties that the ocean provides for us. Pro surfer Alan Sarlo and friends are hanging 10 for healing. Most of the time they go, oh, this is better than Disneyland. He and other pros along with the nonprofit Maui Ola, which means the breath of life in Hawaiian, <laughs> help connect surfers with patients who have cystic fibrosis. Recent studies have shown surfing to help clear their lungs. Not only is it a great escape and a release for them from their normal routine, but um, they come back with uh, better breathing tests and, and, and their lung function is way better. Brianna Schroeder is just 14 years old. She swims and surfs with a feeding tube and requires constant medication. But she can do a lot more in the salty ocean air. The ocean, it's kind of like um, a breathing treatment. Brianna met pro tandem surfer Bobby Friedman at a Maui Ola event and asked if he would train with her for contests. Her tenacity breathed new life into her expert partner. I'm retired. She goes, no, you're not. We entered a contest and we won. Brianna is now one of the youngest ever to compete at world championships. I was never really into surfing until I came out like four years ago and I've been hooked ever since. We're hoping to spread the word and let other people know um, that are afflicted by this illness that they can go ahead and they can do anything that they want to do.
when you are radiant and light streams from every doorway. Night seems impossible. Thank you.
by putting the spare tire to work. As the fates would have it, what was therapy becomes a passion. The hours become years, years in the water. Brianna and Bobby find themselves ranked among the world's elite. Surfing their home break, the French couple Pamon and Delia Cetron have to be favored. The 2015 champs Kalani and Crystal look as strong as ever. And two-time world champ Chuck Inman takes a new and talented partner to France. The game is on. It was a June morning, still dark, when Bobby first called off. It was an old neck injury, the kind that comes back sometimes. Surely it will heal. A week or two, tops. It never did. Do you think you'll ever find another surf partner? Um. Bobby because she just worked so well together in the water. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> I was just wondering the same thing. It's like, where are you going to find somebody like that again? Brianna goes on for a while, finding comfort in the ritual. The church is out. The mourners have departed. 
that is, but for you and I. And this impartial camera. Father, do not weep. I have seen what's beautiful.
So it has come to this. This act of love must end. You must have known we'd find the numbers. Did you know they would crush us? them, the days when play was our work, the days you breathed and sighed in father's arms. I have kept a record. Three things I believe, and I leave them with you. There are wonders in this world. You have seen some, as have I.
incredible. She's actually starting to do some of the acrobatics, which is amazing. Uh, today, was, today was one of the first times that we actually got to carve and turn. She was a little scared. She's like, oh my god! So tell me, what does it feel like out there? So you're Thank you. 